So now that we've covered what a personality disorder is, I'm going to go through this theory that I've got that I keep talking about. I'm just going to keep rambling and talking on here. Now I'm going through an outline. This may appear online at some point. I may talk about it in the future. If you're looking past the archives, I'm not going through necessarily tit for tat what's, what's on an outline. The, the basic theory that I've got is that this Eastern shame culture may be, I'm, I'm not an expert, but I'm, I'm red in, and I've been in Asia 10 years, so I have something to say about that. I think shame culture is a mental illness. And it's a mix of paranoid personality disorder, antisocial and borderline disorder from cluster B, and all three from cluster C, uh, obsessive, compulsive, avoidant, and dependent. And you can go learn about those on your own. Now, when you get a culture where, where, where crazy is just running rampant and crazy people personality disorders are everywhere, other personality disorders are more welcome. So that's why I think we get people believing in ghosts coming back and people will avoid trees at night because they think there's a ghost under them or like they believe in houses being haunted. One guy, one guy in Taiwan had a house and he heard this scary splashing noise in the house. And they couldn't figure out what it was. They thought it was haunted and sold the house for less money. Those people bought it, heard this splashing noise in the house, and they got scared fearing it was a ghost. And they sold the house. They, they're scared from ghosts because they believe in family worship. Okay, it's filial worship or something. They worship their ancestors. Well, they sold the house because they were scared. And then the people that bought the house were scared and sold out. And it went through five hands of people. Finally, the last guy said, what? I don't believe in ghosts. And he hired a plumber to find out what was going on. Long ago, someone had flushed a goldfish down the toilet. And it was in, in the sewer under the house. And it had babies. And it had a bunch of fish. The goldfish grew up and had a little goldfish uh, school down there and they, they were flapping in the water. And that's what was making noise in the house. It took a goldfish out and finally... Went back to the original owner and the old man bought it at market value and said, I'm so happy that I can die in the house that I was a child in knowing that it's not haunted. Okay, that's maybe schizoid or schizotypal. I don't know. Um, maybe. Uh, but, you know, when, when you've got a culture where personality disorders are everywhere, you're going to end up, I mean, it's going to invite people that are really, truly crazy. They're going to be showing up all over the place. So, um, are there going to be other personality disorders that show up a lot in Asian cultures? Possibly, but I think that the contributing recipe is paranoid, PPD, paranoid personality disorder, antisocial, APD, antisocial personality disorder, borderline, BPD, borderline personality disorder, and then obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD, and uh, avoid an independent, uh, a, a, you know. So, uh, so there, there we go. Now, I think that that once you get enough of these, like like a crazy person in the house dominating and bullying everyone else, they dominate and bully society, and like the people in the house just surrender to it. The people in the society surrender to it, and it goes back to the monkey, the experiment with the monkeys in the cage. I don't have a source on this. Sorry. But the, the anecdotal story was that supposedly, whether it's true or not, I'm not going to depend on it. It's a metaphor at least. They put the monkey in a cage with a banana at the top of a ladder. The monkey climbs up the, the ladder toward the banana. They blast him with ice cold water until the monkey jumps off the ladder. And they keep doing this until, until the monkey never gets to the banana. And finally, the monkey gives up on climbing to the banana. He just won't do it. Once the monkey resigns that he's not going to get the banana, they introduce another monkey. The monkey climbs up the ladder toward the banana and the first monkey attacks him. And he keeps attacking. There's no cold water. Keeps attacking until the new monkey doesn't do it. Another monkey in the cage. Those two new monkeys attack. Th those two monkeys attack the new monkey when he climbs for the banana. They keep doing this until there's seven monkeys in the cage. None of them are climbing for the banana. Only the first one got blasted with ice cold water to keep him away from the banana. Then they take out the first monkey. 
And all the six new monkeys that never saw the ice water, don't know why they're not going for the banana, attack him when he climbs, or it. I don't know if it was a huge. They attack the new monkey when the new monkey climbs for the banana. And I think shame culture does that. The people with the personality disorder just run wild and they keep abusing people throughout society just like a, a crazy person abuses people in a home. And the people get beat down. Uh, maybe something like abused wife syndrome. But it, it's not just it's not just limited to that. Um, but that, that could be sort of a way to, to imagine it. And all of society eventually resigns to this state of always being dominated by this few. I think the 80-20 rule applies. Where you've got these few crazy people that are allowed to run wild. And the rest of society will enforce their rule. And I believe that's Asian shame culture. It, it behaves too much. It behaves too much like an American Psychi Psychiatric Association DSM personality disorder. It, it behaves too much like certifiable insanity. It, 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 it just, I'm reading about personality disorders and I'm looking at what Asians have done to me and with me and, you know, around me over the last 10 years and what the other Americans, what Brandon has gone through, which we're going to talk about Brandon in future episodes and stuff. Uh, you know, I, the, the friends, the articles about the, the Asian shame culture, I'm looking at all this, what I've seen, what everybody who's been in it talks about, the literature. And I'm reading personality disorders and it's the same thing. I need the same stuff. And it's gotten to a point where I can predict what they're going to do. I can predict who's going to flip their switch and go personality crazy on me in what way they're going to do it. Um... So my theory works. That's scary. So I see typically in, in this Asian shame culture gets written off as, oh, well, that's just how they do things in their culture. And they're never going to change. So don't try to make them change. Now, hold on a minute. That's, listen to that. Consider that. Even at my own Bible school, I'm hearing reports of, of missionary professors from the Moody Bible Institute talking about shame culture. I know it's bad. It's a blight on the culture. They can't apologize and get forgiveness. We're Christians and we teach a religion of apologizing and forgiveness. We teach a religion of reconciliation. We teach a religion of trying to do better. We teach a religion of getting past the past. We teach a religion of, of, of forgiveness and moving on. We teach that, but we're going to help the Asians be Christian without that. The core of our religion, forgiveness, we're going we're gonna to try to make quote-unquote Asian Christians without the backbone, the essence, the mojo of Christianity, which is forgiveness, repentance, forgiveness, restoration. We're going to have to do Christianity without that. The pastors over here, they've got this shame thing on them, and, and they want, and not, the religious folk might call it a spirit of shame. So if you're on any Pentecostals, ask about a spirit of shame. Uh, same thing. Call it a, I call it a recipe of personality disorders, and I think it's the same thing. For me, psychosemantic psychobabble is not my worldview. It's just one way of explaining it. I don't believe that there aren't spirits. I don't believe that there's no God and that psychology is the answer to everything. I don't believe that. It's just a way to explain what's going on. So maybe there's demons behind it. There, there's lots of ways to, you can explain it in the metric, you know, 2.54 centimeters at one inch. You can call it what you want. It's that long. It's, it's how, you're, you know, how. It, so I, I don't, um, The personality disorder grid is that they never change. A personality disorder is a set of behavior judged to be enduring, inflexible, maladaptive, disturbing, and impairs social functioning. It's bad and it never changes. That's, again, my definition from Myers. Now, 
That's what the West, we're talking business schools, negotiations, church, Christianity, we're, you know, the, the, the paradigm of how to deal with the Asians. How do you deal with the Asians and their shame culture? It's bad, it's sad, it should change, but it will never change. They're describing a personality disorder. If it's a problem and it's never going to change, it needs mental help. That's mental. My dad yells at us and it's bad, but it never changes. Call the guys in white coats. Uh, now, I did not mean if he yells at you and helps you. I'm talking about in a disturbing, degrading way that makes you want to go kill yourself. Like, not because you're an SJW either. You want to kill yourself because you're a pansy. I mean, like... It's toxic to be around that person. You come home, you're happy, and this guy starts going off and off and on and on and on, and eventually you get down. Um, so I just, I, I don't want to elaborate on that one too much, but like we need professional opinions on this stuff. If you really believe that someone's doing something that's bad and sad and they aren't going to change, we need to call mental health. We need to get, we need to get the guys in white coats. But when the West has been interacting with this shame culture, they haven't done that. They've surrendered like the people in the home of the person with a crazy personality disorder and they've just waved the white flag. Not only do the massive people throughout the, the Asian shame culture, have they surrendered to people with personality disorder, it's created this culture thing, a shame PD. It's a recipe. It's a, it's a, it's a hive group thing. And the West is surrendering to it when it comes to cross-cultural stuff. Whatever we're talking about, whatever we're talking cross-cultural stuff, we're talking about you know business, politics, negotiations. I know religion mainly, you know Christianity. No, not only I refuse to wave the white flag on this. I've had the Taiwanese here that like 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 monkeys trying to attack me for climbing up to get the banana. I I've had them come at me like that. They wanted to get the banana once, but then they gave up hope and finally resigned. And they tried to get me. I'm not buying it. Jesus forgives. We repent unto hope. That was Phanuel, the book of Enoch. That's cover to cover in the Bible. You sinned. God forgave. Repent, be forgiven, and thrive and live. Shame culture thinks that if you admit a fault, you will cease to exist. The molecules will vaporize your body because no one can possibly ever admit to being less than a god. Like... Uh, no, we're talking mental illness. It's a mental illness, I believe. I believe. And we need to get experts involved in this. And like I say, the, the, I've got this idea for, I'd like to see the APA, the, the American Psychi Psychiatric Association, the, the American Psychiatric Association uh, offer community psych. And I'd like to see them offer th this in online course, online interview, uh, cover some basics, some some testing and reading in advance. Not too much. You probably should be able to do the whole thing in a day. Um, study and then take a test, and and then in in later on you can set up an appointment for for a brief interview. Um, just discussion to know that you're savvy with some stuff. I, I think that you have to test in English. Asians would love that. Ooh, I got the the APA Community Psych course. That means that I know English. I know how to talk to the psychobabbles. Uh, I, 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 I know, and that would be big kudos in these other countries trying to learn English and it would help them to recognize crazy. So we don't need to, I think that's the solution to the shame culture. That's the solution to the shame culture in Asia. We just, we need to, you know, we need community psych. Let, I mean, ultimately that's the point of psychotherapy, right? That's how a psychotherapist explained it to me when I was at his house selling him AT&T U-verse service. That, that's how another lady explained it to me. Education and psychotherapy is about helping people teach themselves. It's about self-diagnosis. Let, let Asian cultures understand what crazy is and they'll solve it themselves. That's the way to do it. So community psych would be useful for Americans. I'd like to see bosses and supervisors and, and school principals, maybe teachers take a community psych course. Um, it, it's not stuff to be covered in college, but it'd be like it'd be like a, a community CPR version of what the Red Cross offers. But it would be to just understand some essentials and to know your way around and and how to call for help. Uh, you know, learning disabilities, how to recognize Asperger maybe, and but know that you can't make a diagnosis. But to be just get a little bit savvy with this stuff. 
but that would be super status. You'd have to study for months, maybe years to get that, uh, mostly English, studying English um, in, a, in, in, in any foreign country. But the, the, the big issue is that, that whatever we're doing, th th this, this is, this is the, the bottom line of all this. Whatever the West, speaking as an American, but whatever the West is doing with the East, whether it's the EU, and we're talking about the East, we're mainly talking about China because that's the big one. I mean, one billion people. So, yeah, Japan, Korea, Korea's a matter. Korea, you know, it's, that's, that's, you know, one of the, one of the great, not the greatest, China's the greatest, Korea's the almost greatest and huge. But when we're dealing with Japan, the Korea's, we're dealing with China, China, Japan, Korea, when we're dealing with these, if we can understand that that shame culture is a, is like a personality disorder recipe, a society wide personality disorder epidemic, not everybody has a personality disorder, but it's like a, it's like dealing with a household. Uh, imagine a household of, um, of, of, of uh, two parents and five kids, seven people. One of the parents and three of the kids have personality disorders. Imagine the, the, the living hell, quote unquote, that it would be for the other people in that family. That's what shame culture is, I think. And by seeing it that way, whether it's the EU dealing with China or other Asian countries, whether it's America dealing with Korea, whether it's, it's a military type of conflict interest, you know, what, how, how North Korea responds to, to Japan having its own independent military exercise, uh, conflict with, um, with, with any islands in South, Southeast Asia, what, whatever we're doing, maybe Indian culture, there could be relevance, but that's, that's Middle East, we're getting over to Middle East culture, not quite the same, not, not quite the same, but whatever types of conflicts are going on between people of this culture and the West versus this culture, if we see it as a recipe of personality disorders, it'll be easier to deal with. If you talk about business negotiations, if you want to do business with them, that, that, that's one of the reasons that, that I get how to do business with Taiwanese. Because in my mind, you know, I mean, I've got myself on the couch as well. I put all of us on the couch. I'm, I'm analyzing everybody. I'm like, maybe, you know, this person's in this culture. So how can I be, how can I be happy and encouraging? How can I make this person's life better? Or, or if the person's a bad person, like my landlady, I think, and needs to be told a few things. Um, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll give an example. Um, you know, Brandon told me, here I am telling his business, I'm not going to get too many deals. I want you to hear this from Brandon, but I'll give an example. He said that he'd tell his host father something. And then the son, who was like a year or so older or whatever, uh, w would basically say that Brandon was right. And, and it was a big disagreement. Uh, it, it had an amazing happy ending. When we was telling me about this, it's, it's a culture clash, a, a, a culture shock, culture conflict, cross-cultural conflict. My answer to him was, the, the point I want to make, he needed to hear that. He needed to know that his ideas were not the only ideas on earth. He needed to know that he couldn't play the, this is my culture card and make you jump and bow and dance to his tune. He needed to know that there are other opinions that people aren't going to let go of, and the sun don't rise and set on his fanny. He, you don't need to be disrespectful and rub his face in the mud, but he needed to know that he's not the beginning and the end, first and last one that always was and ever will be. He Maybe he ever will be, but not always was. So... Um, like some, you know, even a psychotherapist, I, as, as I've heard many times, will tell you that, you know, no, no, there's a line that they'll say, no, I don't believe that. You, you know, they'll say to the, the patient, I don't believe that. Um, there, but I'll, I'll let psychotherapists speak for themselves. But however, we're looking at, at things, there's a line of truth where people need to say the truth and we need to say the truth people don't want to hear. And so, 
whatever it is that I'm dealing with, I, I try to, I try to make people have a happier life. I, I love Taiwanese people. I really love most of them. I see myself as kind of a mental case in a lot of ways. And when I look at my own problems, my own issues, and I look at the help I got in the past, I'm, I'm using that sentence correctly, the help that I have received, the help that I got. When, when I know how much I was helped with my own issues, we've all got issues. We've all got them. When I see what's going on with shame culture, rather than what, what the shrinks call enabling, where I kowtow, kowtow is actually Cantonese. It means to, to bow down to the guy that wants to be the boss. It's actually what it means. Interesting that it applies um, to, to that particular culture, the Asian, the Asian shame culture, which Hong Kong is part of it, to have a Chinese culture. Rather than kowtowing, rather than enabling and letting them continue with what, you know, their, their thing, I'm thinking, no, no, this is, this is yet another type of, of, a, of a mental problem like I've, you know, looked at and all of us have to look at. So how can I help this person be happy? And when I have a grid to look at, that's incredibly useful. Business, government, military, whatever continent to whatever other continent, whatever countries, it's, it's very useful to understand shame culture as a, for what it is. 